So in case you didn't know, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, and living in the South, bows are a quintessential part to Southern style. You see them everywhere. Boys wear them, you see them in lots of wedding parties, the men wearing them, girls wear them attached to shoes and tie belts, they're just everywhere. So I thought, well, why can't Piper wear a bow too? So I have researched many different ways on how to sew a bow, how best to attach a bow to a store-bought collar. I've gone into lots of different shops and looked to see how they attach them and how they are constructed. And I really think I figured out the best way to make her bows and I wanted to share them with you today. Okay, so the key to these bows is double-sided Velcro. I had looked at a lot of bows in stores. Some use snaps, which I found restricted the size collar you could use. So if you were gifting it and didn't know what size collar the dog had, then it really limited it to either just a half inch or one inch size collar. Some were elastic so that you could stretch it over the collar, but I found that really hard to remove quickly, but that is what's key to these bows. So a couple things with sizing. I played around with a lot of different sizes. I finally came up with what I think is the best. So you will have, and I'll list all of these below, the different sizes that I like. You'll have a centerpiece. The first size is for the small dog bow tie. So this is what this size comes out as. I'd say 35 pounds or less would maybe be for a small dog bow tie. For Piper, who's about 50 pounds, I like the medium size here. So this is what I use for her. I like uh, the wider bow. I think it's a little more girly and feminine. So I like to make this wider size for Piper. And if I'm gifting for a boy dog, then I like it to be a little more narrow, a little more traditional. So I've got my bow piece here and I've got a center piece here. You definitely wanna interface the bow piece. You could use something like SF 101 or even heavier. Just depends on how crisp you like your bows. I like mine pretty crisp. I like them to hold their shape. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna fold the bow lengthwise. You're going to stitch down here at a quarter inch. Then you're going to take your center piece and you're going to fold them wrong sides together, just like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can make, if you like a really wide center piece, then you can make it wider. If you like it very narrow, then just adjust and then you're gonna press that too. Okay, so here is your bow piece. You've stitched down at a quarter inch, flipped it right side out. You're gonna to want to put the seam to the center and then you're gonna give that a really nice press. Here is the center piece that you have also pressed. Okay, so flip the bow over so you're looking at the right side of the bow. For Piper's bow, she wears a one inch collar. I find that a three inch piece is the perfect length to wrap around her one inch collar. If you're gifting and you know the dog is gonna be one inch or less, you could still gift it at the three inch and then once they get it, they can just trim off what they don't need. If, you, if the family has multiple dogs and you don't know which dog's gonna wear which bow, you can go up to the uh, like a five inch piece and then they can trim it when they get it, just let them know they can trim it to their needs. So you're going to take the Velcro and it really doesn't matter which side, there's a soft side and a shiny side. I've tried both ways doesn't really seem to make a difference. The hairs will still stick to either side about the same. So you wanna come about one inch in and place the Velcro. Then you're gonna to wanna to put it under the sewing machine and stitch across right along there. I like to do it about three times. Dogs like to roll in the grass. You don't want their bow falling off. So you wanna make it very nice and sturdy. So you'll stitch that one. You'll put your other piece down on the other side. Stitch along there just the same. Once you do that, you're gonna flip the bow over. So now you're looking at that seam. You're gonna fold it into the center. And you want these two edges to overlap. So then you're going to put it under your machine and you're gonna stitch down here to secure it all together. All right, so here's what you have. You've put the Velcro on one inch in from the edges. You've stitched that down. You've folded them in. You're looking at this raw edge, don't worry, nobody will see that. Nobody will see the stitches on the other side either. So now it's all nice and secure. 
Now there's two ways that you can finish the bow tie with the center piece. If you are going to be gifting this and you want it to look very nice and professional, you're going to fold in the bow. You're going to wrap this right side of the center piece to right side of the bow, flip it over, and you want to stitch along here to attach the, cent the center piece as close as possible in um, my stitches to really give it that nice crisp shape. If you like a fluffier bow, then you can loosen it up and that's how it looks, but I like it to be pretty tight. Okay, so here it is. I've put the right side of the center piece to the right side of the bow. I've stitched and I've just chopped that off. Sometimes, depending on how tight you've gotten this, it can be a little hard, but you're going to flip this center piece right side out. You can use a bamboo stick to help you if you've gotten it very tight, but you're just gonna flip it like that. So here is what a finished bow looks like where I've put that raw edge to the inside so you're left with just a really nice professional looking bow tie. Now, if you're just making these for your dogs, you're trying to be a little faster, excuse the hair on this, this is Piper's Christmas bow, um, then you can just wrap it. You'll do the same thing with your bow, but you're going to wrap wrong side to right side of the bow wrap it around, still stitch as close as you can to that bow, and then you're just going to chop it off. So here you see you're left with a raw edge. Not a big deal, but it is a little faster if you're trying to make a bunch of these all at once. Okay, so here is a finished bow I just made for Sunny. I couldn't remember what size collar he wore, so I just attached the three inch Velcro like I make for Piper, and then here's his collar, which is it's probably a little less than half an inch. So I will just trim off what I don't need, wrap it around, perfect. Do the same thing to the other side. So that's what I like when I don't know what size collar, if I'm giving it as a gift, the owner has, I just leave the extra and let them know they can trim it to what they need. So perfect, there's Sunny's new bow tie. So I really have a lot of fun styling Piper's bows with different store-bought collars. So here is her latest one, perfect for spring and summer. I've got it attached to a cute little pink gingham. This one is my favorite collar. It's a gold glitter one and I think it just matches so much for Christmas. I pop on her red bow, perfect. And then this is another one she has not worn yet. As you can see, there's no hair <laughs> attached to it. That one's a lot of fun. Here's a couple others, very well loved. She's been wearing these a lot, but you can see they hold up their shape really well. She plays, she wrestles, and they stay really nice and crisp. This one's probably the most well loved. So have fun using up your scraps to make your dog some bow ties to go with your store-bought collars. This one is actually left over from a dress I made, so I'm going to put it on Piper and wear my dress and we're going to have our own little mommy and me moment. Why shouldn't all the fun be left to moms with human babies? I hope you guys enjoyed the bow tie video. Make sure you subscribe to us so you don't miss any of our videos. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked us. Till next time, bye. <laughs>